Elon Musk has said that the Starlink beta is soon going to end and service will be rolling out nationwide by the end of this month, October 2021. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you an update on Starlink, SpaceX's massive constellation designed to bring broadband internet to, well, anyone with a view of a big chunk of sky. Um, now, SpaceX has been rolling out Starlink for quite a while now, and it has been in kind of an open public beta test, but it has only been available in you know select areas, select cells have been turned on, mostly on the northern half of North America, south, well, northern half of the United States, southern half of Canada, where the satellites were most bunched up in the sky. Now, we reported on last month that SpaceX had you know, finally finished deploying its first complete shell. So it actually has the satellites now in position in orbit that it can bring out service to a broader audience. They can bring out service to the south all the way down into Florida, potentially all the way down into Mexico, and you know, basically anywhere just a matter of them deciding when they want to do it. And well, now we know, at least for the United States, Elon Musk has responded via tweet to say that the beta will be going will be going away in October and service will be going nationwide by the end of this month. So, wow, that's great. What, is, what does that mean? Does that mean everybody who wants Starlink will now be able to get it? and Service will be available in all cells wherever you go? Not quite. Even Elon Musk kind of put a little bit of a reality check right into his, his tweet saying that, note, the beta will be ending, uh, the service will be going out nationwide, but he says, note, still limited by peak number of users in the same area. In other words, the number of users Starlink can serve in a given cell is actually quite limited right now. Uh, he went on to explain that you know Starlink is designed for low and medium population density areas, and they can hit the maximum number of users in an area very, very quickly. So, no, you won't be able to sign up for Starlink service if there are too many other people who've already gotten Starlink service where in the area that you are at, at least not until a whole lot more Starlink satellites have launched. So, so what does this actually mean now that the this Data is ending, services opening up. Um, we'll probably know more once SpaceX makes it official and they announce whatever changes might be coming, but we're actually seeing a lot of signs behind the scenes that things are opening up. For you know the last several months, it has been very, very difficult to find open areas where you can activate new Starlink service, or for people who are you know RVers who are traveling and using Starlink in a portable fashion, it's been very challenging to find cells that would let you effectively move your service address. It was, in some areas, almost impossible to move Starlink around. People were paying their $99 a month and finding no place they can get connected for you know, a big chunk of this summer. But over just the past few weeks, we've been getting a lot of reports, and even members of our team who are testing Starlink have been trying it out in places that they were not able to activate or move their service address to just a few weeks ago are now letting them move their address activate service and get connected. So something has changed. Starlink is a lot more open. It's not completely open yet. There's still a lot of cells where you cannot turn on service, but it is vastly different than it was just a few weeks ago. And in fact, just a few days ago, we've seen reports of people in Florida getting Starlink service to activate or move their address to, including even in Miami. So it looks like they're turning on turning on the south, all these areas and cells that they have not had any Starlink service in before. They're letting people move into them. Things are opening up. This is the sign of the beta period ending, more cells being activated. But is this just a limited window of opportunity as they add this capacity temporarily before, well, all those cells reach that peak again? Perhaps. So this is, if you are interested in Starlink, well, Get signed up, you know, get on a list and see if you can get service in your address. It will be first come, first serve by area. If you already have Starlink and it's just kind of sitting dormant because you haven't been able to get it active where you need it, activate, change the address, change the service address where you think you'll need it for the winter now while, while those cells are potentially open, particularly the southern cells. Get your service turned on there. And, well, also keep in mind, though, if, if you're still waiting to get Starlink, um, 
it's still going to take a while for SpaceX to catch up on its backlog of demand. You know, they have said in the past that they have well over 500,000 people who have pre-ordered Starlink service. Um, they've only been able to deploy about 100,000 customers so far last time they shared a number. And keep in mind, SpaceX has said that they're only able to produce around 5,000 of the Dishy McFlatface receivers a month right now. Uh, they're very complex and expensive to build. So they still are on the verge of rolling out kind of the next generation, lower cost, easier to manufacture dishy that will bring their manufacturing costs down, not the end user costs, and let them crank up the pace of bringing Starlink out to the world. So things are about to get interesting. If Starlink, the, the beta is ending, you know, service is going wide, the new next generation dishy will probably be here before the end of the year, it'll be cheaper to manufacture. It's cool, it's exciting, there's a lot going on Great for SpaceX. Um, there's a couple other updates in the satellite world as well. You know, SpaceX isn't the only uh, company making headlines recently. Another one that was actually kind of exciting this past few weeks is Link. This is a company that is intending to build, turn satellites into cell towers in space, able to communicate with ordinary cell phones. You know, imagine pulling your phone out of your pocket and getting getting cell service even hundreds of miles from a cell tower. That's Link's vision. And they have announced that they have successfully, for the first time, demonstrated a connection between a satellite and a regular unmodified phone. And you know, their, their pitch is like, well, why worry about dishes and fancy receivers and all this other technology if a regular phone can be a satellite receiver? And that is a bit exciting, but also there's a bit of a catch with that. You know, what Link is aspiring to right now is text messaging from space and because their satellite their satellites are so widely spread even in a couple of years once they've gotten enough of them up there it'll be text messages that go through every five to 20 minutes um you'll be able to get weather forecasts text messages and you know eventually maybe way down the road maybe voice service maybe broadband but text messaging from space still pretty cool and the thing is they've demonstrated this and said that they actually have a partnership with Aleve in the Bahamas to bring this out sometime in 2022. So limited text messaging while cruising the Bahamas far, far from shore could be kind of cool. So keep an eye on that for next year. And there are other companies also, um, the Spacemobile, which is also working on a similar technology to build giant antennas in space to communicate with regular phones. Um, we're still tracking that. There's a OneWeb, which is SpaceX's biggest traditional co uh, competitor that is um, continuing their monthly launch pace. And they say they are still on track to have service in Alaska and other very northern areas by the end of this year and then rolling out globally sometime next year. Uh, so they've got a constellation going, but OneWeb is not targeting end users directly. They will be selling via partners, not direct to customers. So we'll have to wait and see what partners sign up and what sort of one web powered plans emerge over the next year. And well, of course, then there's, you know, Amazon's project um, Kuiper that is, well, still theoretically making progress behind the scenes. Uh, Amazon has booked launches to begin in the years ahead to start launching Kuiper, but mostly it seems like Amazon has been filing a lot of lawsuits to try and slow down SpaceX and Starlink. So the, the race to bring next generation technologies, put them into orbit and uh, help us stay all connected is getting more interesting and more exciting than ever. <laughs> Sky's getting kind of crowded. And well, we will keep keeping track of everything that launches, everything that flies overhead and every uh, press release that we see to uh, keep an eye on what's real, what's actually happening and what's interesting for our mobile audience. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.